All right, Shalom, Shalom. This is a Sirach, chapter 14, verse 3. Riches are not comely for a niggard, and what should an envious man do with money? And I just want to give all praises, glory, and honor due unto Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bahashem Akahakodash, and the blonde to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well and that do teach well and that have taught me this truth. To you I say Shalom and Shalom unto the hopeful elect. Yeah, and it's so true, man. Rich, the scriptures don't lie. Riches are not commonly for a nigger, and what should an envious man do with money? It's true, man. Um, a person that is a nigger, and that really applies to um, the tribes, especially the southern kingdom. You know, when you when you come into some money, and when you're a nigger, you you don't look beautiful. You don't look good. You know, you you look very. You don't. It looks like you don't have class. You don't know how to spend the money properly, and and you're spending the money on things that are that that are that are vain and empty, and also you're not putting the money back into your own community and not building up your nation. And um, that that's why you're labeled a niggard. Now the word niggard, what does it mean? It just simply means here. This is from the Adam Online Dictionary. Niggard. It means mean or stingy person miser late 14th century nigard nigard or nigart so yes a mean or stingy person a miser and, and that's our people for the most part especially when they come into some money right and um, you can you, you can you can you can you can use uh, these celebrities for an example man when they when they when they came into money and success and fame especially money they changed, man. They became more mean. They became more stingy. And they didn't put their money back into their community, even if they wanted to. Right? Even when they did, they didn't like doing it. And uh, and then when they put money into their communities and the money stayed there, the people within their community badmouthed them, man. <laughs> so you can't win. But um, the reason why our, our people are our niggards is really due to the curses, us rebelling against uh, Yahweh Bashim Um Now, let me get uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's really due to the curses and us just being rebellious and wicked, All right? Um, and that's why we're, we're, we're this way, you know, niggardly, uh, mainly the two-thirds. But if you come into this truth, you can't be a niggard. You can't be mean. You can't be stingy. Especially when it comes to the Lord's house, his ministry, and, and uh, his flock. You can't be a niggard. That's just not going to fly here. The Lord is going to kick you out. Now this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse uh, 17. And it says, Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. <laughs> yes, that's so true. That's so true. Um, and for the most part, um, when it comes to having a business or being an entrepreneur, making money for yourself, you're cursed. Um, that's the curses that are on you. And, you know, when you're cursed, and especially if you don't know that you're cursed, um, you, you become very mean. You become very stingy. You don't want to help nobody. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's worse when you're cursed and you don't know that you're cursed as an Israelite. Um, you, you, you even, you even become more niggardly. And I'm, I'm not saying that people in the truth, they're not niggards as well. You do have individuals who know the name of Yahweh Bashim Yoshai, who know this truth, who know what they're supposed to be doing, but they're still uh, a bunch of niggards. Um, you got camps that are very niggardly organizations. You got, uh, ISUPK. I'm talking about the leadership. Okay. The leadership, you got the IUIC, you got individuals sitting on uh, hundred, hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, how did they get that money? By being a niggard, man. <laughs> By going against uh, uh, what the Lord wants, right? Being mean, being very stingy. So, yes, you do have individuals who are in this truth and they are niggardly, right? But they're not going to last too long. They're not going to look too good. Now, next next one I want to get is Deuteronomy 28, verse 54, because uh, that's, that's how we're set up, right? You know, it's really the curses, 
curses that are, that are on us that, that causes us to be niggardly. And it's worse if we don't know that we're cursed. Um, so anyways, it says here, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 54, So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the siege and in straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates that's <laughs> true and yes that happened over here in america man uh, no love you know you're not going to receive no love from the israelite man woman and child okay especially the man um, he's going to be evil towards you he's not going to provide for his children he's not going to provide for his wife so you know that means he's a niggard man very mean very stingy all right so it's really due to the curses and also us being oppressed in this place for so goddamn long, we don't even know better. <laughs> That's our people, man. All right? But you're not supposed to be this way. You're not supposed to be stingy. You're not supposed to be stingy. Now, let me get Hosea 4 and 6. Uh, and this happened because we rejected Yahweh Bashem Yoshai. And that's why these curses have, have fallen upon us. Especially that's and that's why you've turned so mean. That's why you've turned so niggardly. It's because you rejected Yahweh Bashem Shai. Hosea chapter four verse six, it says, "My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge." You know, if you if you're a niggard man, you're destroyed. If you've become so mean and bitter and stingy, to the point where you don't even want to help yourself and your community, you're you're destroyed. All right. So it says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That's right. And the knowledge is Yahweh. Scripture says, our God or our power is a power of knowledge. And why? Why? Because he is omniscience. He is all-knowing. He knows all things. And he has given us this word. Right? This word. This word that... Uh, as a, basically, it's a manual on how to live and how to survive and how to achieve success in a temporal and wicked, evil world, right? So uh, we rejected that, right? We rejected that. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. So because we rejected the Lord, he rejected us back. And a part of us being rejected is us being put under the curses. We're subject to the curses, and we can't get out of it. And, you know, it's to the point, too, um, um, you know, we, we may want to help, because we, deep down, you know, Jake wants to build a brick community and help, but they can't do it because of these curses. So by default, due to us being under the curses, we're going to be niggardly, especially if you're not in the know, especially, especially if you don't know who you are and you don't understand why, you're under the curses. You're going to act that way. And that's Jake for the most part. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. That's right. So, yeah, you're not going to be a lawgiver. And that's because uh, you, you forgot the law. So now you're going to become lawless. And now that's going to cause generations of Israelites to be destroyed and forgotten. Uh, verse 7, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame. That's right. And your your, your glory has turned into shame. Right? Look at your communities, man. You, you know, you used to be uh, just around wax fat. That used to be you. You used to make other nations tremble. Tremble in fear. When you were right with uh, Yahweh Bosh and Oshai. That's no longer the case. These other nations can come into your com community, set up shop, mock you, take your money, and then put their kids in college, and then demonize you at the same time, and call you a no good nothing, no good for nothing nigga. That's what they can do, and they're still doing it to this very day. Now, I just want to go into a point that um, Elder Yermeyer, um at camp, the camp that just passed uh, last Saturday. Uh, he made a point about group economics. 
and uh, we, we went a little bit into it. Um, pretty much, man, um, he brought out the statistic on how um, you Israelites, when you get money, it only circulates within your community for about six hours. Right. So so what does that mean? A, a lot of the money that you get, it's not circulating in the hands of your fellow Israelites that live among you. Right. So so that's not good. That's terrible group economics. So our people, they don't really understand group economics. They're not taught. And also they're they're cursed. They're really just taught to consume and buy from these other nations. Now, these other nations, especially the so-called Chinese and uh, these so-called Jews and their communities, you know, when they get money, that money is passed uh, in the hands of at least eight people before it leaves their community. At least eight. And while that money is being passed uh, in the hands of their own people, that money is being used to build up their communities and to help each other. And you tribes are not doing that. You know, so, so that also goes into the point that I'm making about you Israelites being so uh, niggardly, man. You know, there's you, you guys don't understand group economics, and that's because you have been rejected. But I'll tell you this, that's not what the Lord wants from you, because the Lord, He taught you everything about group economics. That's the law, statutes, and commandments, right? And you have forgotten your way. The Lord didn't teach you that. Now, I'm going to get a point here. I'm going to go into uh, 1 Samuel. This is when uh, King Saul was made king. Right, he was inaugurated, but this was very important, right? You know, he he received the the wine, he received the goat offering, and he also received the two loaves, right? Um, you know that that showed that the Lord's providence was with him, and um, that showed that the Lord was breaking bread with him and supping with him, but that was also to remind him that he shouldn't dive into the luxuries of being king, and being niggardly, right? Um, now let me get the point here. Um, <clears throat> let me get the First Samuel's, First Samuel, uh, chapter ten. I think it's in ten. Yeah, ten. Oops. Let me just uh, move this here. First Samuel chapter ten. I'm gonna start at uh, verse three. All right. I'm gonna start at uh, verse three. Okay, so it says here, Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to the Most High to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee, and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. That's right. And you're supposed to salute the king. You're supposed to honor the king. Especially if he came into power, he was inaugurated, right? You're supposed to do all of that. Um, now, obviously, you know, um, the kids and the loaves and the bottle of wine, uh, which the three men had with them, um, obviously that was designed for sacrifice, you know, going into the meat offerings and the drink offerings, um, that, that that's to attend the sacrifice or the sacrificial service. Um, so so you, you also have to look at that. You know, those are the same things that the Lord has given you. Like uh, going back into Exodus, uh, the thirty-first chapter. You know, what, what did what did he do? Um, what did he give? He gave Mo he gave uh, Moses at Mount Sinai. Uh, the two tables of the testimony, right? The tables of stone written with the finger of the Most High. You know, that, that's the Lord breaking bread, right? So this, this also represents that going into uh, Samuel, you know? Now, I'm, I'm, why, am I, why am I making that connection, right? I'm, I'm going to make my point. I'm going to make my point into that. Um, so pretty much um, the, the two loaves... Um, which were the first uh, paid tribute to to the newly anointed king, being uh, King Saul. It's really to serve for, I would like to say, maybe a warning to him not to spend the wealth of his crown in luxury. And um, that's something that 
our people they don't understand right you see that though that those offerings the meat offerings the drink offerings the loaves that's to remind you to be humble you know when you're in a high position especially serving and representing Yahweh Bashem Yahushai you see that's the point i'm trying to make right so our people you know when they get some money i'm talking about especially you celebrities man when you get some money you you serve yourself. You don't serve Yahweh Bashim Yosha. You don't serve your community. You become even more wicked, and more vain. Right, and and at the same time, you're not content. Right. So so basically, um, you know the, the two loaves and and, and 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 the things of sacrifice that um, he 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 involved he was involved in when he was newly anointed. It was also to uh, warn him uh, to not spend uh, the wealth of his crown, the wealth of his crown, and luxury, but also at the same time to be content with plain food. Okay, with plain food, and you saw that man, you saw that uh, you saw that took place many times, not just with King Saul, but also with our people when they were being uh, led out of uh, Egypt when they made their exodus out of Egypt. All, all those miracles that you witness, um, uh, um, that was that was uh, that was to show you how the Lord was dealing with you, how He wanted you to be. He didn't want you to be niggardly. For example, the manna raining from heaven, right? The water coming out of the rock, right? That was all to remind you to not live so luxuriously, but to still be content with what you have. And our people, they didn't really understand that. You know, they were still niggardly. They were still thinking about, oh, you know, let me go back to Egypt. I want to go back and eat the leeks and the fruits and the grapes. Oh, I want to be, oh, we, did we come out here to die? Right? You know, it's not all about luxury. It's about you being content <laughs> with what you have. And uh, they didn't care about that. So I just wanted to uh, use this as a, as as a as a point. So I'm going to read it one more time. First Samuel chapter ten verse three. Then shall thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to the Most High to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee the two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. Beautiful. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of the Most High, where is the, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy and the spirit of Yahweh will come upon thee and thou shall prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man that's right okay so you're not supposed to be niggardly you know when 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 you when you come in the presence of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai you're supposed to be humble you're supposed to remember that um, it, it's not just about uh, living in luxury you're supposed to be uh, content and when you accept those things, that's when you're going to be changed. And that's when um, you're going to get all these deep revelations. And that's when the Spirit's going to be on you. And uh, you're, you're, going to, you're going to get to a higher understanding. <laughs> right? So, you know, um, riches, uh, going back to Sirach, Ecclesiasticus uh, 14, riches are not calmly for niggard. And what should an envious man do with money? And it's so true. It's so true. Our people are a bunch of niggards, man. Now, um, let's get Exodus chapter uh, 31, uh, verse uh, 17. The point will be made in 18. So let's get uh, Exodus chapter 31, verse 17. And it says, It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Here's the point. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, 
tables of stone are written with the finger of the Most High. So the Lord, He gave you law, statutes, and commandments. Right. right. So this shows that the Lord, He broke bread with you. He wasn't stingy because He gave you the keys to eternal life, which is really through Him and His Son. All right. He gave you everything that you need to survive in a wicked and temporal evil world. Now that's group economics. Because with the law, statutes, and commandments, it comes laws. You know, we have 613 laws. And, 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 those, and those laws, it leads to life, eternal life. Right? Now, are, are we, are we going to be perfect? Can we keep all of them? No. But that's why uh, you, you have to repent. That's why you have to uh, shed blood for the remissions of sin. And that, was, that already happened through Yahweh Shai. Right? <laughs> So that sacrificial system's done away with. But we already have that. You know, we already have that. So this is what, what's in store for us. It's all about uh, group economics and thriving and living forever. And that's what we're going to get to. We're going to get to that eventually. Okay, that's going to be the fulfillment of the second covenant, which that hasn't been fulfilled yet. But we're going to experience that in the kingdom. All right. But we got to rehearse the righteous acts. We got to rehearse the righteous acts. And when you rehearse the righteous acts, you appreciate things much more. And that's the thing, man. Our people, they don't appreciate anything, especially what the Lord has given them. And that's why you are a bunch of niggards, man. A bunch of niggards. Now, let me get uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. And it says... Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. That's right. And you know, the Lord is not just going to kick down the door and, and then go in your kitchen and start making some eggs, right? And sit down. The Lord's not a nigger. You know, you have to let him in. Right? When he knocks on the door, you, you have to let him in so he can come in and he can sit down with you. <laughs> right? So really, um, if you want the Lord to sup with you, to break bread, bread with you, to get more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, to be increased, you have to accept Him. All right? You have to accept Him. So it says, if any man hear my voice and open the door, and you know, how do you start hearing the voice? You hear the voice really through the prophets that are on the highways and byways. Okay? And that's really the voice of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and that's going to enter your mind. Okay, open the door. That means to go into your mind. <laughs> and I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So what does the word sup mean? It means to sup, right? Supper, eat a meal, break bread, right? So so this is the Lord not being a niggard, man. He, he's not stingy. He's not mean. He's showing you friendship. All right, this is friendship. And this is called group economics. He's building you up. Okay? Building up his nation, building up his community, building up the individual. So we can be better. And that's what we're striving for, to be better sons of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Right? Now let's get the word uh, sup here. Let's get the word sup in the Greek. Strong's G, 1172, Dipneo. 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 Mm -hmm. Sup, supper. Take the principle or evening meal sup. Okay, yeah, sup. Let's see here. Eat the evening meal, dine, sup, dip bread or wine. Okay, <laughs> so you saw that in... Um, First Samuel, right? And those are all the things that you do for sacrifice. That's all for dinner. Okay? That's all for dinner. Okay? So, so yes, you have to break bread with the Lord. You can't be a niggard if you want to serve the Lord. So, I'm going to get that again, man. Because we got the definition. First Samuel. Come on, man. First Samuel 10. 10 and 4. No, ten and three. And then shall thou go for go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet 
the three men going up to the Most High to Bethel, one carrying three kids. Okay, that's the meat. <laughs> and another carrying three loaves of bread. And another carrying a bottle of wine. And this is all to sup with, sup with, sup with the Lord. Okay, and that's that meal. And this is used for sacrifice. Okay. So there you go. Sup. Eat the evening meal. Dine. Sup. Dip bread in soup or wine. Right. Broth. Evening meal of French workers. Yeah, that's because we're workers too. We're working on our own salvation with fear and trembling. And we're working on the behalf of Yahweh Bashan Yoshai for his nation and his community. Okay. Which are the Israelites. So we're working. And a working man's got to eat. All right. You can't be stingy. <laughs> you can't be stingy. I'm just adding those things. But you get my point. Right. You get my point. All right. So uh, let's go back here. Revelation 3 verse uh, 20. Uh, verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I am set down with my father in his thrones. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Now, I just want to say this as well. Um, these scriptures, it is the money. It's, it's actually better. Then thousands of gold and silver. The scripture says that. Right? Remember it says, uh, The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. So this truth is really priceless. Right? It's really priceless. Okay, so this is really the real riches. The word, man, and the word is Yahweh Shai. That's the real riches. But a lot of our people, they forsake that. Right? And you have a lot of niggards in the truth, man. And they have a lot of niggards in the truth. You know, they take this truth for granted. And they don't think that this truth is anything. And you can see by the way they act, man, through their actions. On, on how on how they, they treat the Lord's flock. How they're caring for the ministry. Which they're not doing that. Matter of fact, since I did, said that, let me get the, the precept. Uh, that should be Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Uh, 119 and 72, I believe, 70 probably. Okay, I'll start at 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, the law of thy mouth, the law of statutes and commandments. Unto me thousands of gold and silver. So pretty much... Uh, the law, statutes, and commandments is is pretty much priceless. But a niggard cannot see that. A niggard, you know, has no faith. He's mean, he's stingy, and uh, he, he, he doesn't want to partake in, in group economics. You know, he wants to do his own thing. So he'll cast this word behind him and be all about himself. And you can't do that while being in this truth. You can't. The Lord forces you to break bread with Him and with other brothers as well. So, with that being said, man, you, you have to um, you have to uh, get together with brothers too, if you can. You know, whenever you get that opportunity to do the work, make sure you're there with the brothers. Okay, and you got to put all things aside and just and just break bread, man, and make money because it's about group economics. Right, so anyways, with that, I just want to give all praises, glory, and honor. Do one, two, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachachachodash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that well and that do teach from and have taught me this truth to you. I say Shalom and Shalom unto the hopeful elect. Kwam Yashal and Abad Babal. Shalom.